was your relationship with Doctor Who growing up? Because I'm right in thinking, because we're relatively around the same age, and, and growing up when we did, Doctor Who wasn't on the television at all. Is what I think fans call the wilderness years. Um, yeah. And so, and so, I remember when I when I got into Doctor Who, not many people, certainly nobody at my school, even had a, had a clue what it was. Mm. Uh, and obviously, you coming from that background, and would you you would obviously, you know, you your mum was very involved in that community. And as we know, Doctor Who and that community were really active in the time when it wasn't on the television. What was it like for you kind of growing up at that time? Um, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, because obviously, yeah, it wasn't on television at all. But there were still kids in my school playing, you know, Daleks and stuff in the playground. And I always kind of got roped into having to play Doctor Who with them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I was never really that interested in it growing up. And I think like getting older, I have more of a respect for not just the programme, but the people behind it that, you know, or the writers and producers, Philip Hinchcliffe, Dougie Campfield, you know, days gone by right up until present day. Um, yeah, I mean, I watched it a bit with my mum, but I think as a child watching Doctor Who with her, the person that was on screen, it was almost like seeing a relative of my mum because she didn't look like that anymore and she didn't talk like that anymore but it was still <laughs> somehow her like when you show your own kids photos of you as a baby they're like who's that what so um I, I never kind of connected it until a bit later but yeah isn't it weird that our, our generation I guess is since the program started is the only one that really has this massive gap of just no one and then when was the Paul McGann film 96 yeah I guess that must have been the closest that we ever got to having a a doctor. Hmm. Yeah. Which is really Can they, uh, yeah. Could, could, could I just ask? Yeah. Um, how old were you, Sadie, when it dawned on you uh, of how uh, appreciated or famous uh, your mum was? Um, and even to some extent your dad. And uh, what was it? Because uh, I, I read an article recently that um, uh, Charlotte Barker, who was Ronnie Barker's daughter, uh, it only registered with her when they were uh, in Paris viewing the <laughs> Mona Lisa, and she noticed that people were staring at her dad and not the Mona Lisa. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a lovely story. Oh, yeah. um, I think. I think because of the conventions, by about five or six years old, I kind of was like, ah, OK, so there's this thing called Doctor Who and, and people want to, to meet my mum because of it. And there's this big blue box that people keep coming in and out of. And, ah, OK, this is this is what's going on. But um, when I was younger, really, my mum did an advert for Iceland. So before Kerry Katona, there was Elizabeth Sladen and she... Um, yeah, she was like the archetypal mum character doing a lot of these adverts. So people would just shout at us in the street sometimes, like, where are you going on your holidays? Iceland, you know, thinking they were very clever <laughs> oh, and stuff. So, <laughs> so it was just <laughs> more embarrassing, really. But when you're a child, your parents are just embarrassing anyway, aren't they? No matter, you know, I guess if you're Shiloh Jolie Pitch, you're like, oh, my parents, so embarrassing, you know, going to Malawi <laughs> again, like, oh, you know, I, I think that's just kind of how it... Um, well, some parents pull out the old Polaroid pictures. Your mom oh, pulls God. out a commercial. <laughs> 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 